So I was thinking it's probably a good idea to get some wheels first before I do anything else with the suspension. And having $360 left in the budget, buying new is totally out of the question. So where does one go to buy cheap used wheels? eBay of course. Uh, various car forums, specifically cars that has the same bolt pattern as the Conquest, which by the way is 5 by 114.3 And last but not least, my favorite, Craigslist. I searched and searched and eventually came to a conclusion. The wheels that I did want were out of my price range, while the wheels that were in my price range I didn't want. Ugh. So what to do? Well, you know, I've always liked the look of the stock wheels on the Conquest. They got that really cool retro design going on with it. Probably one of the best looking stock wheels in my opinion. Good size, good offset, and they got a little bit of lip action going on too. But goddamn, do they need to be pushed out. Maybe an inch or something. So I was thinking, what's the best way to push wheels out? Spacers. And I know, yes, they are frowned upon in the racing community, but f it. This is a goddamn car show I'm trying to enter, not no race. I went on Amazon and picked up the cheapest 1 inch spacers from a company called Orion Motor Tech. They sell random ass shit from stand up hair dryers to kneading roll foot massagers. But hey, whatever, spacers are spacers, right? I mean, they're just cylindrical pieces of aluminum billet with studs. How can you f those up? Unlike the Mookie sleeves that took 3 days to arrive, these bastards took 3 weeks. It's a good thing I ordered them mid December because these guys didn't get to me until January 3rd. The package comes with instructions, not how to put them on, but how to measure the lug pattern that you have on your car. And a bottle of thread locker, which for some reason I don't trust. The spacers themselves look well constructed. They're round, with five studs and five lug nuts. Looks good to me. The lugs on the spacers are half by 20. Is, is that how you guys say it? Half by 20? Mm. Meaning I can't use my stock lug nuts on these. And come to think of it, I, I can't even use the stock lug nuts to bolt the spacers on because they're acorn style. What you need to make these spacers work are open ended lug nuts. My dumbass should have ordered a set online the same time I ordered the spacers, but I don't think ahead like that. I instead went to the closest O'Reilly's and bought whatever they had. What they had was three boxes of four lug nuts, meaning each wheel will have three lug nuts. Hey, hey, it's a test fit, so no worries, I'll buy the rest later. Promise. My very first concern after placing the spacer on the hub is the stock studs. The stock studs are longer than one inch, so as you can see here, they stick out. About a quarter inch in the front, and the rear stick out about an eighth of an inch. I mean, I could take my grinder to them, but after inspecting the back of the wheels... What the f***? <clears throat> after inspecting the back of the wheels, it seems I won't have to be doing any grinding. These holes right here are in the perfect spot for the excess studs to go into. Thank god, I mean, these are spacers. You bolt them on, done with. I didn't want to do any grinding, come on. Now let's put this on. <laughs> Hey man, these things are great. My guesstimate was spot on with the one inch. The lip of the rim are close to, if not, flesh the fender wells. Seriously, for less than 70 bucks and very little effort, I got these wheels, which, by the way, already looks good to look even better on the car. F the haters, man, this shit is awesome. All right, now that I got the wheel issue settled, let's let's go back to the whole stance issue. While some may say, and even I would have to agree, that the current ride height of the car is pretty good, it's still not good enough for the Station Car JDM slash Camper Gang crowd. Remember guys, this is a car show build. And yes, I too want to secretly slam the car. But see this gap? That, that needs to go. 
But the adjustable sleeves are already set to their max lowest. Well, you know what that means. Let me just say this as a disclaimer. Cutting springs is bad. But you know what? Smoking is also bad. In the end, I ended up taking out the first coil, you know, the, the flight coil on top or the bottom, which I would count as a half coil, and another full coil after that, uh, totaling up to one and a half coil removed. Front wheel to fender was four inches and is now closer to two and a half. Front lip was five inches and is now three and three fourths. That's really good. That gap is gone. Unfortunately, the shop is uh, about to close, so I'm gonna have to finish the rears off some other time. Now, instead of taking off the whole strut assembly, I'm going to take a shortcut and see if I can just take it off from the top. Well, that was pretty easy. Easy because uh, apparently the shocks are dead. Not being able to kick the lift arms out from underneath the car is a really good sign that I'm heading in the right direction. That direction being low. You know, I always said it, I always believed it, the Chrysler Conquest was meant to be lowered. It was meant to have wide wheels, and it was meant to be slammed to the ground. <laughs> you know, every time someone asks me what I would do if I were to mod this thing, this is what I'd do. And that's going to be it for today's episode. Stay tuned for next week where I relearn how to mount tires. <laughs>